Good morning, good afternoon, and good day, everybody. David here, and today we're looking at the Destiny 1 returning classic, No Time to Explain. This is a reissue of a very popular Destiny 1 weapon, which was in fact a reissue of an even earlier Destiny 1 weapon. This weapon has come with the new Beyond Light DLC, and if I'm not mistaken, it was a pre-order only weapon. So if you pre-ordered the game, you should receive this at the end of completing the campaign. But if not, if you're a free to play player, it will be added to the loot pool next season. This weapon is very enjoyable to use. It does have some minor drawbacks, which we shall get into during this video. This weapon also goes hand in hand with the new stasis abilities, as you'll see when we get into the perks in just a sec. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the perks on the weapon are as follows. This is a high impact frame pulse rifle, and the main perk is rewind again. Precision shots and shots against combatants slowed or frozen by stasis will return to the magazine. We also got fluted barrel, accurized rounds, an exotic perk, time slip, a 10 stacks of rewind again, a small portal will appear, shooting shots from another dimension. And then it also has full auto trigger system. Now as I said, you receive this weapon at the end of the Beyond Light campaign, and you also receive the soon catalyst mission at the same time. So just finish the campaign, you'll see this mission drop, and you just have to kill Vex in certain areas of Europa. The areas are actually where the new strike takes place, so you can do the two at the same time. Once you completed that, just pick up the catalyst from the stranger back at her camp. And as you can see, the catalyst like perk makes it so the little portal fires faster. But it doesn't change the way the weapon performs at base for you, but the portal DPS is increased just because of the rate of fire increase. So to complete the catalyst, you literally just have to kill a load of enemies. So I just found a load of X in a lost sector and it took me about an hour in total to do. Now the weapon itself performs pretty well in PvE. Because of the refund of the bullets on precision hits, it's actually great against big targets that have massive crit spots. You can see here that when I'm shooting this captain in the face, I'm just refunding bullets constantly. That's great because your mag just never runs out. The ammo comes from like, the ether, not from your reserves, so you just never run out of ammo. It's brilliant. In PvP, it performs fairly well. Now I'm a console player, so this is from a controller point of view. But this pulse rifle arc type is very strong. It's a two burst kill if you hit all your shots. But the problem that you have with this weapon is it's hard to control that recoil at times. It's not a pick up and profit weapon. You have to put the time in to really like get to know the weapon and get in the groove with it. But you pull down on the right stick, just ever so slightly, start at upper chest height, let the recoil rise up and pull it down to counteract it. You'll start hitting the headshots, no problem. And then you can really start the perk going. The perk then makes it really forgiving because that's helping with your um, like DPS so once you've got the perk going you can really start slaying out and it's awesome. Even though this weapon is full auto, much like the last word, I prefer you know, tapping the trigger, pacing my shots, really making sure I'm just hitting those headshots. At times you'll see that if you start an engagement and you don't get the headshots first, more often than not you actually lose that engagement because with flinch and your enemy strafing and all those other variables, this weapon can be a little more unforgiving than others. So like I said, really pace your shots and really line up your shots before you take them. Just make sure you you're landing every bullet you can on the crit spot. Now some other high impact pulses that are its main like competitors are the Redrick's Broadsword. You see it comes with the perk Desperado which increases the rate of fire when you reload after procking Outlaw. There's the Cold Denial which can come with many perks some of which are just incredible. My particular favourite that I've got is got Feeding Frenzy, Multi Kill Clip and Head Seeker. Head Seeker making it more forgiving and Multi Kill Clip just making it a beast for chaining kills. Uh, the new kid on the block, the Stars in Shadow. I've got one with Killing Wind and Disruption Break and also a Range Masterwork. So you can see the range bar on this is just filthy. 
and with Killing Wind procced, it just doesn't have damage fall off, it's absolutely ridiculous. So as you can see, the No Time to Explain has 82 range, 64 stability, 45 aim assist, and a recoil direction of 90. Now across the board, these are higher stats than some of the other high impact pulses. So for example, my Cold Denial here, it's got 66 range, 52 stability, 37 aim assist, with a 100 recoil direction thanks to arrowhead break. Obviously these will change depending on the perks that you have, but my Redrix Broadsword has 79 range, 77 stability, 39 aim assist with 90 recoil direction. If we compare it to the new Stars in Shadow, my roll has got super high range, so 87 range, 49 stability, 28 aim assist, and 79 recoil direction with a counterbalance mod. You can see the no time to explain space stats are the highest across the board. Redrix is the closest and probably its main competitor with it being in the same slot. Now the problem I have with the no time to explain, and I can't really quantify it in the stats, is that it just doesn't feel as tight as the others in the spread when you fire it. And this comes more apparent when you fire it in full auto. This is why I advise still tapping the trigger and pacing your shots. The spread of bullets seems to be wider and therefore it's actually harder to keep those precision hits tight. So I have to pull down on the right stick a lot more with the no time to explain than I seem to have to do with the others. And because the others can all roll with the damage perks, so Rudrix obviously has its Desperado perk, Cold Denial can get multi-kill clip and swashbuckler, and the Stars and Shadow can also get kill clip. The latter two also rolling with Headseeker, which really helps with the ease of use of the weapon. I think other high impact pulses are just better. They've got better perks that make it just easier to get your kills with. Being able to get things like um, Firmly Planted and Killing Wind and other perks that just help with your damage over range and the tightness of the bullet spread. Another thing I've noticed other people starting to do in the Crucible is just use a standard high impact frame pulse and just use the normal arc style with it and you get the same effect as you do when the no time to explain perks is started going but it's just a lot easier to do and then obviously you can stack the damage buffs and stuff with the pulse on top of that then and you can proc it whenever you want so you don't have to chase people down as soon as you get that kill to make the most of the perk now the recoil patterns of each of these weapons you'll see the cold denial is fairly vertical mine's got a hundred recoil patterns so it's perfectly vertical is awesome broadsword is fairly vertical as well that's got the same recoil pattern as the no time to explain at 90. the new kid on the block stars and shadow this one pulls slightly to the left but um, it's still quite tight in the actual spread. Now the no time to explain, or slightly to the left, but it also feels like it has a bigger spread to it, which is kind of the downfall compared to the others. All the others are super tight on the spread, whereas this one feels like it's not so much. So when firing full auto and then bloom and everything else comes into effect, you really start feeling those just like ghost bullets not going where you want them to go. Again, to not sound like a broken record, you really want to pace your shots, uh, pull down on the stick, really just make sure you're um, making every shot count. The other legendaries are by far more forgiving and more lethal. Now, with the damage perks such as Desperado or Multi-Kill Clip, they're not only more lethal doing more damage per bullet, so therefore a faster TTK, more forgiving, because you're doing more shots per bullet so you're able to like miss a few in your burst and still get the same TTK kill. Less damage fall off so you can kill people at greater distances a lot easier. And it also saves your exotic slots so you can keep your exotic power weapon. All in all my thoughts of the no time to explain is that it's fun. The archetype is really strong. It's in a good competitive place at the minute because of the buff. I believe at the start of last season. But compared to the legendary 
options just based on a high impact frame. I think all the other options are better. But in my case of spades, I think this is a very creative like reissue of a Destiny 1 classic and I've thoroughly enjoyed using it. So if you've enjoyed the video, a like is very much appreciated. Comment down below if you've unlocked the No Time to Explain and the Catalyst. Let me know your thoughts if you've enjoyed using it or if you feel like it's a little underwhelming. And if you want to join our community, please remember to subscribe. I do stream over on Facebook every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. It'd be great to have you here with just a bunch of chilled gamers who love playing Destiny as well as many other games. But until next time my friends, take care, keep having fun, keep up the grind, and I shall see you all very soon. Bye bye!